Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the 3D printed APC project. The previous and first video was fairly non-descriptive. I initially didn't intend on releasing the video, hence the subtitles instead of voiceover. However, let's actually get into what this thing is about. The entire project started because I needed something to do when my health wasn't that great last year. So I took the running gear from some previous projects and started modifying everything to work for this new purpose, just with a lot of tweaks. A big drive for this project was to be able to bash this car around, but also have a really good low speed control for slower off road stuff. So for the first time for me, I'm attempting to design a shifter gearbox. Just two gears in this version, so you have one for regular driving and one for crawling. This is what an earlier version looked like. The suspension links are a bit of a compromise, trading in flexibility for simplicity. This makes it easier to both source the hardware and build. Integrated into the bottom of the gearbox is a transfer case of sorts. From there you would have normal telescope drive shafts to the solid axles. Both for off-road capability and simplicity when building it, there's no differentials and everything is 100% locked. This cuts down a lot on the amount of parts, whilst ensuring maximum traction. An early version of the body. I drew a lot of inspiration from the Russian BRD M2, since I wanted this to be some kind of military vehicle. The scale is around 1 to 12, making this a total of 48 centimeters long, or about half a meter. This scale makes even half the body quite chunky. A lot of time went into designing this as to make it as easy as possible to print. A lot of design and print hours later, we got this thing. This is pretty much the state that it was driven around in the last video. So what was the thing with the gearbox giving up by the end? Well, the first problem is the shifter has a tendency to jam as the gears try to mesh. It works 90% of the time, but it, uh, it needs to be better than that. The second issue is a real design flaw, trying to have the motor in line with a long input gear with bearings on both sides. Getting the motor perfectly concentric with the input gear proved impossible and things would basically shake apart, hence why the motor is loose here. Another complete oversight on my part is the gear ratio itself. After it stopped working in the last video, I felt that the motor was insanely hot. Apparently, the gear ratio was high enough for this thing to theoretically do 50 km per hour, so it had been struggling a lot during all my low speed, full throttle maneuvering. Here's a closer look into the gearbox. I use one of the extra channels on my remote to control the servo to change gears. The grey double gear beneath is what tends to lock up against the gear set below that. Current state of the undercarriage. Not a lot to mention about it to be honest. So out with the gearbox for a rather large redesign. Luckily it's pretty modular and easy to get to. First step was to add a new gear state, both solve the high ratio and problem with locating the motor. Definitely still got issues with shifting locking up, often have to give it a blip of throttle just to get it to kick the next gear in. Another hidden little feature with this new version is that the big blue gear is sitting on rubber bushings, hopefully saving your box itself from the worst torque spike. A little demonstration of the gearing, supervised by the safety cat. Rolling up in high gear, obviously struggling to go this slow in a controlled manner, even with the new lower ratio. Switching into low gear, but getting locked up. Finally releasing when I blip the throttle. Now it's effortless to keep it running really slow and engine braking will also be a lot stronger if you stop somewhere. It's pretty noisy since I'm running the gearbox dry with some badly printed gears. No point in lubing everything up and making perfect gears when prototyping. It does climb a bit better in reverse, probably down to weight balance and the steering bar not being in the way. Occasionally you do get the complete lockups, which is unacceptable. Obviously I still need to redesign the internals a bit. What needs to be fixed was to make the gear sets that get shifted around much shorter, before they would engage the other ratio before leaving the first one, hence why it had to be done at a standstill. Due to the different amount of teeth, this wouldn't always align and required a little bit of movement in the drivetrain itself to go smoothly. The servo simply wasn't strong enough to make this happen, especially with the new ratio that locked everything up even more with the stronger engine braking. With that fixed, shifts are pretty much 100% reliable. Just testing things out in high gear, changing to low gear, applying pretty much the same amount of throttle here. Back to high gear and giving it quite a bit more, probably around 70%. It seems to work, so let's stress test it some more. Luckily we got some more snow I could play around with. The new crawling gear is amazing for carefully traversing terrain, whilst the cruise gear will get you anywhere you need to go. I think I capped the throttle to like 60% here just to ease things in, knowing full well that some of the gears were in awful shape already when they left the 3D printer. Whilst it does have pretty big wheels and a good clearance, it's definitely no rock crawler and likes to get stuck on its belly. Definitely need to plan your routes if there's a risk of getting hung up. 
So just taking the chassis for a spin makes it easier to test things and identify issues. I also don't want to damage the body when I really start stress testing the chassis. Throttle is uncapped here and I'm intentionally being quite jerky with the controls to see what breaks. Low gear again being absolutely amazing for tackling obstacles. Some days later with some nice daylight and a freshly charged battery. Didn't feel like going anywhere so I figured a pile of snow would be a good testing surface. Again high gear doesn't give enough torque for really slow speeds but the low gear is absolutely perfect. Not having enough momentum does have a tendency to dig yourself down though. I start pushing things harder and harder as I get more comfortable with it. Even with this simplistic suspension setup it still flexes quite well to the terrain. For the fun of it, trying full throttle on loose snow quickly ends up burying itself. Eventually I actually managed to recover by alternating directions and steering back and forth. I think at this point I was pretty much trying to break something. Either by overstraining the drivetrain or just driving rough, since I just still don't know where the weak spots are. So what's better than trying to jump it? Unfortunately I aim worse than a blind man. There's a dry and not icy spot to the left here which I use as a starting stretch. But uh, let's shape this a bit better. Climbs it no issue in low. Mediocre jump. Much better, even wheelied for a bit on landing. Ah yes, the familiar sound of cracking plastic. Something definitely broke on that landing. Looks like I might just need a wheel alignment. Nah, it's good. But yeah, that's the progress so far. It's started becoming quite reliable, just a lot of smaller issues to work out now for ease of use. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for the next adventure, please leave a comment and hit that thumbs up if you liked the video. I love hearing from my viewers and it really helped me and my channel out. Goodbye!